Hi everyone, it's your boy Zach. It's like 4.30 in the morning. I went to Europe like a month ago and my sleep schedule, <laughs> it just never recovered. I've been consistently waking up at 3 or 4 in the morning every few days. So anyway, um, I just finished Thor Love and Thunder, uh, I don't know, like five minutes ago. And uh, yeah, it's terrible. It's uh, I can't believe I haven't seen anyone say this. It is the Ghostbusters 2016 of Marvel movies. Um, so uh, let's just start out with what is good about it, um, because it's a really short list. I really liked Thor's superhero costume. It was very colorful. It was more colorful than it's ever been before, and I thought it looked cool. Weirdly enough, Jane Foster Thor works. Way better than you thought. Now, there are some scenes that are absolutely excruciating. But they just kind of treat it as, hey, this is kind of like a fun thing. Let's go with it. And then they ruin it at the end. But for like most of the running time, the Jane Foster Thor. And if you don't know, the comic books introduced her years ago. And it was kind of ruined from the beginning. The writer of the character put in this really passive aggressive bit where he basically said, you have to like this character, and if you don't like this character, you are a sexist. Whereas in this movie, she was just presented as another goofy character in a movie full of goofy characters. I have uh, talked about how much I hate the sitcom aspect of the MCU, where every character is comic relief, where every dramatic moment is immediately undermined by a garbage tier joke and this one is like the master's thesis of ruining MCU movies. Christian Bale was good or rather he had the potential to be good. He was trying with an absolute shit script and having to deal with again just like with Ghostbusters 2016 a bunch of horrible improv. Let me tell you a constant of the universe. Good-looking people aren't good at improv because they never had to be. Go look at actual improv troops. They look like the final contestants in a fetal alcohol syndrome contest. They are horrifying. They look like actual human cartoons. So no, Chris Hemsworth and Tessa Thompson and Natalie Portman are not good at improv. So don't write a bare bones framework of a script and then just tell them to wing it. Their looks is what wings it for them in life, in general, in their careers, not their improv chops. So it's a very basic story that gets ruined just straight out of the gate. Christian Bale plays Gore. He is uh, religious. He is dying. He beseeches his God. And his God is a comic relief god out of a Disney tween sitcom who is very disappointing. So he kills him, quite easily, I might add, and then formulates a plan to kill all of the gods. Now, I haven't read the comic book storyline where this came from, but I've heard it's epic. An intense actor like Christian Bale gets a weapon, the Necro Sword, that can kill gods, and he sets out on the warpath. Also, just so many jokes. It's just, no. Okay, so... I mean, I don't need to belabor how unfunny this is. One of the things I will talk about is how fucking schizophrenic it is. Not only was it the worst MCU movie by far. I know I said that last week for Shang-Chi. Shang-Chi was the most boring and formulaic MCU movie. But it is magnitudes better than this, which is just god-awful. And for having some very obviously expensive scenes that were storyboarded by people who care... You know, probably a year before Taika started actively working on the movie. It feels very lazy and cheap. I swear that a third or more of this movie is just basic medium shots with flat TV lighting. At one point they go into this sort of weird necro realm where everything's black and white. And it's supposed to be really creepy. And it could be if it again did not have... Flat, even TV lighting on a feature film. 
Weirdly enough, it was not anywhere as woke as you would think it would be. Although they did belabor the point several times that Korg, the rock creature, was gay, as was his father, as are everyone in his in his race, in his species, even though in the last movie he talked about his mom and his stepdad and he didn't like his stepdad. But the main problem is Jane Foster. Even though I said that the um, Lady Thor works fairly well for about two-thirds of her scenes. There are so many things that can be fixed by very easy dialogue additions just to get you over the hump of, wait, we're supposed to believe that Jane Foster is the love of Thor's life, possibly the only love? He's thousands of years old. He's been all over every realm of the multiverse, and he's gone through an incredible character trajectory over the last, geez, more than 10 years. And now he's just some sitcom simp. He's like, oh, <laughs> uh, eight years Four months and 27 days. Not that I'm counting. There's been this trend on TikTok to make fun of the trash humor in the MCU. I was behind in a lot of the movies. So I thought they were exaggerating for effect in the TikToks. No, they were using exact lines like, Hey, he's behind me, isn't he? It's very difficult to believe that Jane Foster was the love of Thor's life, even though they haven't seen each other in almost nine years. They show their relationship in a montage, and it is horribly dysfunctional. He's an emotional wreck, simping like crazy. All she cares about, it's a woman in a Western mood. What does she, she cares about her career. That's all she cares about. And she's like the epitome of every bad girlfriend of every superhero. She's like... I didn't leave you, she actually did, with a note. You left me. Yeah, he left to go save the entire universe. Which really unravels when her whole thing is to be him when she was dating him and she didn't even find him interesting. Finally, there is this horrible thing that happens not once, not twice, not three times, at least half a dozen times, in which there will be a fight in which they want to have, you know, a bunch of minions, essentially, you know, just generic workers for the supervillain. And they also want to work in constant humor, including just kind of just standing there while a bunch of extras fight air and then some computer guys put generic demons in there. And it's not like a quick little quip, you know, while they're dodging swords or whatever. Like, Jane and Thor will just stop and have, like, two to three minutes of terrible improv comedy. And then they'll, you know, just wring that tit dry. And then they'll go back to some really lazy fight choreography. There is one scene specifically where Gore kidnaps the children of Asgard. And it is so incompetent. So they have this little town square, like this little Disney village town square. And they're getting in the most low stakes fight imaginable where you can just do like freaking sitcom humor for multiple minutes. The uh, minions of gore will be like, oh, no, d don't attack them. Now they're having a little fun little bit. Let's just go attack just random villagers. And then they show, you know, on the second floor of all the surrounding Buildings, and they're right there on the square that all the children are sleeping. They're sleeping while this huge battle, and then they just cut to like this weird wagon outside the city that has all of them in there. Like, none of the kids woke up before they were kidnapped. Like, it's just, it's so fucking lazy. Uh, Taika Watiti, obviously, well, I was gonna say he has a huge ego, I don't think he has it anymore. I think we all suffered through the humbling of Taika Waititi finding out that no, he can't do everything. And I loved Thor Ragnarok, and I still do. I rewatched it recently thinking, oh, you know, it's probably not going to hold up. It totally does. I, I literally fell asleep in the theaters watching Thor 2 The Dark World. And uh, 
I've probably seen Thor Ragnarok, I don't know, like seven times now. It's fun. It was refreshing. Obviously, Guardians of the Galaxy was a huge influence on that. But I thought it was better. I thought it aged better. This is just awful. And again, it's not like, oh, Taika Waititi, he was a fraud. Oh, he just got lucky. No, he's done multiple really good films. Jojo Rabbit is a masterpiece. But this was just 100% ego. I saw some promotional material where even Tessa Thompson is like, why is Korg two different colors? Oh, don't even get me started on the terrible comedy bits. There was a... Bro... There was a fight scene, fight scene, just a bunch of spinning around, where Korg gets killed. And then we find out that his race, um, as long as you don't kill the face, they can regrow their body. Except for we find this out at the same time as Korg. He's like, oh, I'm alive. Oh, I I guess uh, you have to kill my face to kill me. You don't know how your own species dies? Then, Tessa Thompson ties his face to the back of her head so he can help her out in the battle. Oh, Jesus Christ, it's so bad. And then you know the thing where someone will say like, oh, enemy at 3 o'clock? He says enemy at 2.48, like 2.48 p.m. Get it? Because it's like... It's like time, but it's like more different. -er. And then finally, the Jane Foster Thor thing just completely falls apart at the end. She goes from the typical shitty girlfriend of a superhero who all she cares about is like, why do you keep saving the world? And you don't care about me. Bitch, you live on the world. He's saving you every time he saves the world. Disappears for nine years, shows up, all of a sudden she's imitation Thor. And he's fine with it. He's cool. He's very progressive. Although they do try to gaslight you. Tessa Thompson's like, oh, you're a Thor now. Okay, that's his name. It's not a title. You just act like everything's a title. Can you imagine if, if she just showed up and she looked like Abraham Lincoln? Oh, you're an Abraham Lincoln now. But at the end, even though this should be a like, oh, you know... Uh, you thought I hated you, but actually I was intimidated by you, and that's why I broke it up. No, it just becomes all ego. I think everyone hates that scene where she's like, I'm the mighty Thor, or you can call me Dr. Jane. Like, you are dying. Isn't your whole thing that you sacrifice your life to save these kids and all the gods in the universe, and now all you care about is your ego and being called the right title? That, that's your hero moment, really? But, yeah, it was torture. It was absolute torture. Taika Waititi does not deserve a third try. Keep him away from any of this stuff. Hopefully, he learned his lesson. Because he is talented. He was just very, very arrogant and lazy here. And it shows. Anyway, thanks for watching. Bye.